Creating a functional roof in Valheim is relatively easy, but creating one that you can be proud of can take some extra work and know-how. In this video, I'm going to go over the four methods that I like to use to detail my roofs. Let's do it. Number one, trimming details. Now, sometimes it is a combination of the four methods that will look the best, but first, we'll talk about them each individually. Each method can be used on a roof with a built-in roof frame or without one. I will be showing you each on both. If you have not seen the first video in this tutorial series about adding a roof frame to your build, in its most simplest form, a roof frame is a one meter frame that you build around your house to place your roof pieces on. This brings your roof pieces out away from the build, making your roof look more realistic. You can see that I do this on the sides and also on the front and back of the build, and typically by one meter. The first trimming detail method is the double line method. This is by far my favorite method and the one that I use most. You simply shift click and free place another line on the outside of your roof edge. Sometimes I like to lower this new line a little bit so that you can still see the old line behind. This method not only looks good, but it also brings the sides of your roof out away from the build just like the roof frame, meaning that this method helps a lot with a roof without a roof frame but it also looks great on a roof with one. The second method is using one meter points on the edge of your roof. This method is very simple and can be applied very quickly to most roofs. The downside is that the one meter points will go bad in the rain. The third method is similar to the one before. Here we are once again using one meter points, but this time from underneath the edge of your roof instead of connecting them to the side. I find this detail works great underneath roof frames and underneath the double line method, although it will stick out past the double line method and go bad in the rain. You will also notice that you will not be able to use this method on a roof without a frame or the double line method because there's nothing to put it underneath. The fourth method is essentially building a simple one meter roof frame, but on the diagonal edge of your building. To do this, you will use one meter beams placed along the edge of your roof, and then you will connect them with the matching angled beams to your roof edge. I personally don't use this method much, but I've seen many places where people make this look very good. Now I will show you a few combinations of the five methods. Here we have the double line method and the one meter points method. Here we have the same thing, but with the one meter points underneath method. Here we have the diagonal frame method with the one meter points method. And here we have the same thing, but with the one meter points underneath method. For a few quick examples of roof trimming, here is the lumberjack's house where I used the double line trimming method. Here is the blacksmith's house where I also used the double line trimming method. Here is one of the hobbit holes in my shire build where you can see that I used the double line method and the one meter beams underneath method. And here is another Shire house where I used a triple line actually for the double line method and the one meter beams underneath method once again. Number two, detailing the top peak line. After adding trimming details to the side of your roof, you can then add some details to the top peaks. I have two methods that you can do, but only one that I can fully recommend. The first method is by using iron cage pieces and by using one meter tall wooden poles you can see that you can adjust the pattern to fit the size of the roof that you are working with. You can use them separately or together, but the obvious drawback is that they will go bad with the rain. So if you want to avoid that, I recommend the second method. The second method for adding detail to your roof peak, and the one that I can recommend, is by using 26 degree diagonal pieces or 26 degree X pieces. These will not go bad in the rain like the first method, and you can create some very nice patterns with these. Also, the patterns for this option, just like the first option, can be adjusted to fit the size of the current roof that you are working with. Number three, extra roof peaks. Now, when it comes to extra roof peaks, you have five main options for how they work. If there is a roof frame on the building, what degree roof pieces were used on the roof? If you want to place it on the edge or in the middle of your roof, if you want to add additional height, and if you want to add a roof frame to the additional height. This might sound like a lot, but it's actually very easy. First, I'll show you how to build it, and then I'll show you all of the possibilities so that you can see them. Now, the most simple form of an extra roof peak, you will take out two existing roof pieces on the edge of your roof and replace them with eye corner roof pieces that are the same angles as your roof. And then you just add some trimming details, and that is it. 
This leaves a gap for a window which you can leave open or you can fill it in. If you are using a building with a roof frame, you will remove it when building the extra roof peak here on the edge of the roof. If you are trying to add detail to the middle of the roof instead of the edge of the roof, you can build the extra roof peak the exact same way but in the middle of the roof instead. All examples of the extra roof peak can be upgraded by adding additional height to the front of the feature. I recommend 1 meter additional height for 26 degree roofs and 2 meter additional height for 45 degree roofs. That way you can easily connect them to the main roof with matching eye corner pieces. But of course you can also make a custom size extra roof peak with custom additional heights which I'll explain in a minute with an example. Now when adding additional height to your extra roof peak, you will have to bring wooden beams backwards towards the roof off of the wooden poles used for the additional height. And then you can complete your extra roof peak with additional height by adding regular roof pieces to fill in the gap in the front and eye corner pieces that match the angle of the roof in the back. But having these wooden beams that go back towards the roof now means that you have the option to add a roof frame to your extra roof peak. Just like with other basic roof frames, you will go out 1 meter for a new place to put your roof pieces. You will then need to once again use regular roof pieces to fill in the gap in the front and eye corner pieces that match the angle of the roof to fill in the back. But now you will have to use the matching angle roof peaks to fill in the new gap in the middle. You will notice that using the roof frame will usually cause a small gap in the back next to the main roof but it is okay because this will be covered by the main roof itself. That covers how to make extra roof peaks, so now let's quickly show you all of the different examples possible. First, you have a 26 degree roof with and without a roof frame on the building and on the edge and in the middle of your roof. Next, you have the same thing but with additional height on all of the examples. Then you have the same thing again, but now with one meter roof frames added to the additional height features. After that, you have a 45 degree roof with and without a roof frame on the building and on the edge and in the middle of your roof. Next, you have the same thing but with additional height added on all of the examples. Then you have the same thing again but now with 1 meter roof frames added to the additional height features. Here are a few examples so that you can see how this works in a regular build. Here in my Viking Tavern build, I chose a very simple extra roof peak with no added height to the front. This is a great way to throw in some extra details, but without spending time to add extra height or a roof frame to the extra roof peak. Here in the Viking Outpost build, I decided to add extra height and a roof frame to my extra roof peak. But this time, I built a custom extra roof peak. You can see that the roof behind was increasing in angle from 26 degrees to 45 degrees, which means I had a maximum height that my extra roof peak could be where the eye corner pieces would still match up. By placing the eye corner roof pieces first, and then building the rest of the extra roof peak from there, I made sure that I could not go over the maximum height allowed in the situation. You can see that in the front of the extra roof peak, that meant that I am somewhere in between 1 and 2 meters because I built it backwards. And then to finish it all up, I added some additional roof trimming details to the front and a dragon head statue. There is also another form of an extra roof peak that is much more simple. I like to call this the roof vent. To make a roof vent, you simply take out a roof piece and place another one in its place facing in the opposite direction. You can then line the sides of the new roof piece with matching angle diagonal beams, the front of the new roof piece with wooden beams, and you can also support it with wooden poles. This is a great way to add a quick detail to your roof, but I personally usually go with the full extra roof peak instead. And just like the extra roof peak, you can place the roof vent on 26 degree roofs, on a building with or without a roof frame, and on the edge or in the middle of the roof. And also, of course, you can place the roof vent on 45 degree roofs, on a building with or without a roof frame, and on the edge or in the middle of the roof. Next, we have two quick examples. First, we go to the build with water challenge. You can see here that I had a massive roof to work with, so I filled in some of the empty spaces with roof vents. And the second example is my starter island base build. You can see that I used a roof vent placed onto the front porch area so that you could actually have a view of the ocean instead of a view of the back of a roof. Number 4. Chimneys Chimneys are kind of part of the roof, so I thought I would include 5 quick tips to making a chimney. The first tip. I recommend making your chimney wide enough to fit a stone hearth inside. This looks very good from the inside of your building and the outside, 
and it also allows you to use the chimney with all of the current cooking devices in the game except for the stone oven. If you want to include the stone oven, you can also make it even bigger so that you can use this place as the one place in your build that you will vent all of your smoke. Here's an example of where I did this in the past by making a chimney into an entire room on the bottom of it, which is essentially the kitchen for the build. The bigger you get though, the more you will need to support the chimney with iron poles. I recommend using the inner corners of the bottom largest section of the chimney for this. The second tip is to make your chimney get smaller as you build upwards. This will help to make the shape of your chimney look more realistic. I usually do this in three stages. The third tip is to add details to your chimney shape. To do this, I personally like to cut out all of the corners around the chimney, sometimes with multiple cuts in the same spots. If I'm doing multiple cuts, it's usually on the largest bottom portion of the chimney. You can also add some banners for some extra details and color. The fourth tip. You just saw that you can cut out the corners for extra detail, but you can also cut out sections of the stone that are in the middle of the walls as well. Here you can add two stone arches at the top of the hole and an iron cage wall in the middle to fill it in. This will make it seem like a vent for your chimney. The bigger the chimney, the more fake vents you can add. The fifth and final tip is about smoke and large chimneys. If you're like me and you want a cozy looking fireplace from the outside with a bunch of smoke coming out of the top, then you can actually build a floor in the top of the chimney to place a second fire. This will of course only work in large chimneys where the smoke from the stone hearth will still have enough room on the inside of the chimney to not put out the fire. And of course, you will have to climb up to the top of the chimney to refill the fire occasionally, but I think it's worth it for the cozy chimney vibes if you ask me. Now you know how to add details to your roof in Valheim. The next stage is knowing how to support your roof. If you're interested in that, it is the next video in this tutorial series and you will see a link here once the video is out. If you don't see the link yet, you could subscribe and turn on the bell so that you get notified when the next tutorial comes out. Speaking of, don't forget to leave a like, it helps me out a lot, and I have other forms of social media if you're interested, and a PayPal if you want to support the channel. Thank you very much for watching, more coming soon, and as always, have a good one.